There is something innately wired within us as parents that we always know when something is going wrong. It's most commonly called that gut feeling we get. And as a parent, there is some extra special meaning to it. Now, after years of hearing family after family describe their pathway to their autism diagnosis, I can tell you with confidence that there is almost always a gut feeling that these parents report long before they see the traditional warning signs that are listed on most charts or the poster on the wall in the pediatrician's office. Or if you're a webmd -er or Googler, the stuff that they have on those sites. So today we want to talk about those things that have been found in research studies that are making up those posters that are posted on these websites and make the traditional charts that we see. But even more importantly, we're going to deep dive into the real life stories that parents are telling us every single day in our practice. Now, before we get into the big part of the video, there are some things that are absolutely crucial for you, mom and dad. The gut feelings of most parents that have a child with a diagnosis of autism are as follows. Many felt that their pregnancy was too stressful or too emotional. They experienced birth intervention like forceps, vacuum, C-section, or an induction because of a long stressful labor. They've had difficulty nursing, soothing, and getting their infant to sleep easily. As an infant or a young child, these parents have seen their child struggle with recurrent things like reflux, constipation, ear infections, or repeated bouts of croup, RSV, or other respiratory illnesses. There is this immune system link. And also having to put their child on multiple rounds of antibiotics and things like Tylenol or steroid-based medications. Now, too often, these feelings of concerns, this mom gut, this dad gut, that parents have early in a child's development get dismissed or brushed aside by their pediatrician and they are served up statements like, don't worry, it happens, it's normal, they'll grow out of it. And if with this list, I am giving you kind of a chronicle of your experiences and you are not standing or you are not waiting for them to grow out of it, then you find the right place. This is for you. So today our goal is to identify these early warning signs and indicators and more importantly, help you moms and dads to put it all together to get your child the help that they need. Now, the spectrum and autism cases that we see are very important cases to me. I'd like to share a story with you, a little boy named Evan, and to read to you word for word what one of Evan's doctors told his parents. It was, we don't know what causes autism and there is nothing you can do to help it. Just keep doing all the therapies you already have and hope for the best, but you're probably gonna have to put him in a special home when he's older since you'll be too old and not able to handle him. He'll probably never talk or walk normally. That was the prognosis and the explanation of autism to Evan's parents. This came following a full day long neuropsychiatric evaluation just after his third birthday. They were given no answers. They were given no help. They were given no helpful plan. They were given no positive outlook. But what led to this? Well, every day, Evan had constant meltdowns and tantrums. He was clumsy, fallen, hurt himself. Every night, he would struggle to sleep for more than one to two hours at a time. And every day, with mom and dad cheering him on, trying to get more words out, he very much struggled with speaking and had a really hard time getting more than one to two words out at a time. And even by his third birthday, Evan's gut and his immune system were in a constant struggle, even after all sorts of dietary changes, supplements, and detoxes. But just like we were talking about gut feelings before, Evan's amazing mom and dad knew that there had to be more to the story than what their pediatrician was telling them. They knew there had to be some hope. They knew they had to find some answers. And they knew that somewhere out there, there was somebody that could help. And I'm here to tell you right now, today, that there is all of those things outside of the traditional medicine system that had failed them and Evan so far. Thankfully, this rough day set them on a completely different path. It was a path that would help them to understand better where all of this struggle came from and things that they could do to help his brain and body calm down, be better regulated, and get back on track again. Now, while we'll talk more about all of these things and what to look for and what to do, the important part of the story is what happened to Evan? Now, as the goal of neurologically focused pediatric chiropractic care, it's helping and supporting that nervous system to understand its environment, process things, and act on them accordingly. Even in complex cases, such as Evans, within a short time, 
Those sleep stretches of one to two hours were growing and growing. The one word, two words here and there started to become three words, four words, a full sentence. And maybe the biggest part of all, he started to take on a sense of happiness, some joy, and the best thing of all, some calm. Now, this is not an easy road. This takes time. And if you forward the clock a couple years, Evan's doing much better. And it's because his parents never gave up hope. They never stopped pushing for answers, and they never stopped seeking help. In time, Evan not only found help in getting through his daily challenges, but all of the sensory challenges that were plaguing him from early on were things that he learned to overcome. Evan is now in regular school, he is playing sports, and he has friends. Contrast that with what the pediatrician initially told mom and dad. Those are two completely different ends of the spectrum. And I tell you what, I know which one I would want for my kids. So to get into talking about the early signs and symptoms of autism, they're tracked not only by developmental age, but differences in social, communication, and behavior. Now the list is long, but they center on things like eye contact, repetitive behaviors, lack of emotional response, and struggling to develop speech and communication skills. Many of these blocks and stages come before that social communication behavioral period with many stages of development coming before this social communication and behavioral building blocks that are around the two to four years of age mark, we got to look before that. There are two main developmental systems that help get us into higher cognitive development. And those are the motor system and the digestive immune system complex. Parents that get that gut feeling, this is where they start that gut feeling. This is where they start to see those changes. To talk about movement, Things like holding their head up too soon, they're too strong, or too late, too weak. Which, you know, we can Goldilocks it, and we want things to be just right. So it's important to remember that not one thing on this list will be a definitive marker or diagnoser. Other movement things would be things like difficulty pushing up, or rolling over, or getting to the point where they should be able to sit independently. We may see frequent arching of the back, stiffening and tension in a fully pushed back, stressed posture. We see things like torticollis and plagiocephaly on this list. A huge one is a delay in the ability to start crawling or skipping over crawling altogether. Going straight from being on the floor to walking and not getting that crawling, that cross-crawling communication between the brain and body, that's a big red flag. Just like delayed crawling, delays in walking and movement too. Getting into that digestive, we're looking at things like continuous bouts of reflux, excessive spit up all the time and vomiting. We see things like colic and continuous crying going on and on, where babies are difficult to soothe and they just don't sleep. You can add in constipation and eczema, skin irritation, frequent and recurrent things like ear infections or croup and RSV, and the cherry on top, frequent and recurrent use of medications such as antibiotics or nebulizers. Now remember, with so many developmental things involved, it's important to see that autism is not a singularly focused thing. It is a complex combination of many factors. Traditionally, the view on things like autism have looked more at a genetic component. But recently, and what I think is extremely important, is a more recent recognition of the environment that's being taken into account. Not only the external environment, like toxins and nutrition, but also the internal environment. And that's looking inside the body and of the internal function. Now, the key regulator of this internal function is the autonomic nervous system, by the way of the vagus nerve. That autonomic system is not only going to regulate all bodily function, such as breathing and digestion, but it can also play a vital role in motor tone, immune function, speech, socialization, and emotional regulation. Now look at that list. All of those symptoms pair in with an autism diagnosis. Combine these struggles and symptoms, and we can clinically define it as dysautonomia. This is interference or dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system, which is the primary controller of our internal environment. So why is pediatric chiropractic important to this? Well, with neurologically focused pediatric chiropractic, it's simple because it all begins with our focus on that main, wildly important system, the autonomic nervous system and the vagus nerve, which leads me to a very important distinction. We don't 
treat autism or in any way provide a cure. Our goal here is to work to rebalance this autonomic nervous system. We do that by improving neuromotor tone, movement, and coordination. If a child is stuck in any of those developmental stages listed above and dysautonomia is at play, then even with the appropriate therapies, PT, OT, speech, ABA, they may be on a perfect diet, they may be taking the perfect supplements, they may still struggle to see the results that parents want for them so bad. And that's because their nervous system is stuck in a disorganized, fight or flight, sympathetic, stress stuck on state. Now the key here is going back to development and all of those important steps and stages before we can go forward with ease and building strong function and development. Truth be told, it ain't an easy job. It is hard to add up all of these struggles and to know where to start. But the key indicators discussed above when we're talking about the autonomic nervous system is what helps us as a neurologically focused pediatric chiropractic practice to get the momentum back into the system, to help realign and kickstart those functions of the body that mean the most to develop. So many parents are now seeing that adding in neurologically focused pediatric chiropractic is a huge asset in their child's care. It's that link that they've been searching for that really ties everything together. The earlier you are in getting your scans and your child's nervous system assessed, the more confident you can be that the care plan that we can design specifically for your child will ensure that your child's health and development happen as optimally as possible. As I've said before, I'm here to help. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help your family. I'm here to help your kiddos. So I can't wait to meet you. Can't wait to see you. I'll see you soon. Take care.